7.49. It takes about eight minutes from here to get to the start of the ride. Should be able to get there right on time and get some clips with you all. Week number two, feeling better than last week. I got a couple of rides in this week. So, was able to improve my form. And uh, I'm gonna just sit in uh, on this ride and uh, enjoy getting the K's in my legs. Hope you'll get a chance to get out there, get your legs moving. On this ride, I left Northampton, rolled into the woodlands, picked up the group. Joe Nutt from Dallas was visiting us. We went down Fish Creek into Honia. We took Capitol Hill all the way to Mill Rod. There was a little bit of a breakup. We got the route kind of messed up, but that's why I ended the filming. We went to Montgomery then rolled into the forest off camera. So we had a nice conversational ride after that through the forest, getting caught up with Joe who's visiting us from Dallas. And we came back 1097 into Montgomery, stopped back at Taco, then took the historic way back into the woodlands. It was a very pleasant day, very mild temperatures, and the weather was just cooperative. There was a bit of a headwind coming back, but it was decent. We had a very refreshing ride. I actually enjoyed the ride, and I think you will like the few clips that we put together for you. One of the first Velo Harmony I met him, yeah. guys, yeah, from Dallas. Man. What's up, bro? <laughs> How you doing, man? It must, must be a surprise, man. No, man, I know this guy from anywhere. I know that face. How are you doing, man? Good to see you, my brother. I'm still learning yeah, the man. pronunciation let's of roll, his man. name. Let's roll, let's roll, let's roll. Welcome. Welcome. How long are you in town for? Nunga. I think it's Nunga. This weekend, okay. All right. So, so Joe this is has... This one of our uh, earliest from uh, when we started the channel. Well, yeah, Joe Nanga from Dallas. I'm telling my Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, all right, gentlemen, it's 8.03. Mr. Barras is so back I, I don't from know if Abby's San Diego. Uh, we're gonna, he was taking the, the care of his visiting Fish family. Creek, the standard Fish Creek, Creek mill route. We stop at Fish Creek. And then uh, after that, we go Bailey Grove, but we're going to go 1097 and do Bailey Grove this way, where you get those two lumps that you guys like coming back. And then we come straight down 149 and take the historic way back through Spring Branch. That's the route. We can stop at 149 in Keenan on the way back as a second stop. So the first stop is. I, I mentioned the first Fish stop Creek. being Let's Fish Creek, but the first stop okay, is upright, Taco. I'm safe? not sure why I said Fish Creek. Right, I was thinking Fish Creek. You got a new Creek. bike, you got to pull. Yeah. So that's, that's Adrian. That's a new bike. They that's Adrian a, right a there. He's yeah. got a it's new bike. Well, I call yeah, it a new it, bike it, because, yeah, in essence, it is. It's been overhauled. It's been completely overhauled. That's a complete overhaul. That's what we call it. The motor didn't get overhauled. No, but you got free speed now. He had a mechanical last week and wisely took the bike to the shop. And they found out that. They found out that you needed a complete overhaul. Headset, bottom bracket, just hat. You know, we get a lot of a grit, time. especially on the lower, stuff. the lower yeah, part so, yeah. of your fork. It takes a lot of beating from the road, like, you know, dirt, grit, when yeah, it rains, time. even when it's dry. Years, yeah. So that lower done. headset bearing, it really needs to be kept up with. It needs to be clean. On my bikes, I do them every spring. Because in the winter, you know, you're going to ride in crappy weather anyway. So when spring comes around, I overhaul bottom bracket headset as a result you won't have to replace too many things you can just re-lube them clean them and re-lube them i'm not a painter that does not paint his house i keep my bikes tuned because i don't have a lot of time for riding so when i get on the bike i want to ride i don't want mechanicals so i carry multi-tools that have uh, chain tool whatever i mean i've never had to use a chain tool because i keep over my regular way that's coming Richard back Lamb. To, coming back to the neighborhood. No, we're doing Fish Creek. Last week you get home. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah that, that's Richard yeah. Lamb who's asking about. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's asking. Yeah. Is there last week we did Honey Egypt, yeah. and so this week we're doing yeah. Fish Creek. Oh yeah. 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 Yeah.
because Javier, the, now Javier in the white jersey, you guys going to see late in the film, man, he goes full gas and I'm sitting on his wheel and then my brain says, why are you going this hard? <laughs> and so after sitting there for a hey, while, Max, I let him go. Doing, man? <laughs> Max, good, good, good. The red, good orange see, jersey. Made it out. Max hasn't been riding much. He's just coming out to Bring ride to Fish Creek. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You and a bunch of other people. Max does, Max does not like the weather below 50. Our winters are mild. It looks like 80 miles. Um, 60. Oh, it's only six. Yeah, it's 100K. Oh. Yeah, it's 100K. Yeah, we usually so do 75, here, 80, but extra. today we're doing a, so, yeah, a it's, it's shorter a ride. Sometimes we'll do 75. And what I plan to do going forward is whenever I do the longer rides, I will put on the map an option. Davier. Including on How the map doing? just saying this is Good. Good. Uh, good. Good. a shorter loop per se. Got to figure out a way to do it where it does not include the distance in the full route. If you know what I mean, you've probably been to some organized rides where you had a, a, a loop one and a loop two and you decided whether you were going to do the shorter loop or the wider loop. But on the Garmin Connect thing, anything you put there adds to the mileage. So it would misrepresent and make the ride longer. But I think I would maybe just put the text in there and then let people know that this is where you can turn if you want to do 60 and this is where you go if you want to do the full 80 or whatever we're doing. So we ended up going further. Uh, I believe we did um, probably 75 miles, 120K. I, overall, I ended up doing almost, uh, I think 90 miles or something like that. 154 kilometers. So about 92 to 94 miles uh, with Paul Ilonga and Jordan Munga on the right. And what I was going to say was Joe has an apparel company called Clip It. I'm going to put the link in the in this video. Joe is visiting us. He's one of our first subscribers and supporters. He bought the Velo Harmony kit. He came down. He rode with us. We filmed. He got to meet all the riders here. He met Mo, and he was wearing the original kit. So yeah, this have, is lovely, man. Gonna, to support Joe's venture, business venture, we're going to April have him design a new Velo Harmony most kit, of May, shorts and shirt. Yeah. And yeah. then what we'll, what we'll have okay. him do is, after his design, we'll, we'll put it on his site so those who want copies can get them. But it's going to be nice. He's got a pro-level quality stuff that like you have on Rafa Protein light fabrics he's got a pro line and then a core line and then he's got pro fit and club fit so if you want something more relaxed you get a club fit i like the stuff tight we, i think the main reason i like it tight two reasons i like the way it looks and secondly it makes me get off my butt and get in shape and stay in shape because you're wearing a tight jersey you can't have a big gut hanging down <laughs> and then you got to let that last candy bar go at night and <laughs> go to bed. You know, all of that. I use that for motivation to keep the stage shape. Got to fit those nice jerseys. So we all research forest in the Woodlands, Texas. Um, I'm thinking about switching the overlay because we're having problems with Garmin Bird. It's a free software. That's what I use for the, the data telemetry is called. And uh, they're not they're not supporting it anymore. So we have lost the function of viewing maps when we synchronize. I was able to do it on time this week. But I found another software that you have to buy called telemetry race. overlay that is promising i'm still testing it if i'm going to spend money on that i want to make sure that thankfully they have a trial version you can test it for three days and it expires i let them go because what matters is saturday for the race so these are the same people who come to the race and they're tired and they cannot even finish the race because on thursday they were racing yeah, we talk so about riders that ride hard all, all the time. 
so and then they come to a group ride, ride with dead legs. Gonna do the MS. So if you got a big, yeah. You're training for it, and it starts on Saturday. You don't kill yourself on Thursday. Yeah, you still ride, but you don't use the heavy gears. You spin and you just to stay loose. And then on your ride, then you can push. And even if you do the MS, the first day, you take it easy. The second day, then you can push. Yeah, we're That's talking the about the upcoming it. MS-150. So I'm the talking people with that I Pedro. Coach, I have to get them to discipline themselves. It's hard for them to not follow people. I said, let them go. It's no big deal. That's why cycling is a lot of times, like last week, I came on the ride, I wanted to do long steady. They started to go on Keenan and cut off, I let them go. I know the ride. <laughs> I can find my way home. That is like a know where you are. You should. That's that's the reason I put that map out there every week because it's not yep, easy yep, to make yep. that map on Garmin Connect. Yeah, but I yeah. make it so people can download it if they want. Yeah. Every week, so that if you come visiting, like this guy's from Dallas, uh -huh. in the blue, uh -huh. he's got the map. He'll find his way. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, at this point, I know just looking at the map, I know where I am. Well, that's the reason I, I do the map because I want people to yeah. not feel like they're lost. Yeah. So this is the benefit so of riding in the group. There, We're the doing almost. Turn, 20 you miles an hour around, we're talking or you'll be going for miles before you can turn it's yeah. a very social yeah. sport yeah. yeah on top of that it helps you to know you know where are you going yeah, yeah. where are you going before the ride so yeah. left. exactly so you can so you can hold your towel yep knowing that you can turn to matches depending on exactly So we're approaching Egypt Lane in the Woodlands, Texas. If you turn it right during the week when I ride this road, back there I'm mostly on the shoulder, and then when I'm within about maybe a block from here, maybe 500 feet or something, I get on the road and I'm safe. And I use this lane. I don't ride on the edge there where that shoulder is. I use the lane. And then when I turn, I stay where Max is because this lane ends shortly. But then once it ends, that will just lead you to a little shoulder, you'll see. It allows, especially when I come out here in the morning during the week, guys are going to work, you know, they can keep moving. You're not, you're not in the way. So we all get along. When you ride your bike, you gotta think about the other people using the road. Don't block them. You have the right to be there, but you're a slower moving vehicle, so let them go by when it's safe. You see how we're riding? We got the white line in the middle. You see how, how much how little of the lane we're using? Because we're still trying to do two abreast to it. That's okay. This is not a very busy road. And it's early Saturday morning. But we're not taking up the entire lane. I mean we could. We have the right to do that. But we've chosen not to. There are cars that will pass using that middle turn lane. You can see that they use part of that middle turn lane. But we're right, we're, we're, we're going to take more of the lane because once we get up here, we have to go a little to the left because the, the lane going straight stays to the left. Then there's a right turn lane at the intersection at 1488 that's coming up. And I think we actually hit the green light. Yeah, what Pedro is talking about, it, all these corners are all built up. This corner is very crowded around lunchtime. Yeah. But during the week, not so bad. No? No. Everybody's going in town. But, uh, yeah, but in the morning, <laughs> in the afternoon, I, I trained the other day over there in Cimarron. And across this forest. Yeah. <laughs> Awful. Whew, that sewer. <laughs> yeah, that's the sewer smell. I, every night, then we smell that from time to time. This is 1488. We are in Egypt, Texas. Riding towards Honier, Texas. Senor Barreras. I'm gonna turn around and talk though. Okay. I've been off the bike and I gotcha. I'm gonna take it easy. Gotcha. But I'm gonna stay for a So Mike's yeah. been off the bike in California visiting family for several weeks, I think. At least a couple of weeks or more. But yeah, so he's 
paying attention to his body. But you know how it gets. You will see him. I think he's on camera when the, there's a little bit of a breakup in the group and he puts down the power to ride up to the group. You know, he worked a little hard there. When we got the taco, he wisely shortened his ride to give it so that he does not wreck his body. When you're out of shape and you push too much, you put your body in a position where you have to lift and beg for stuff because when I say beg, basically pay your tax. Because you do too much, you got to pay the tax at some point. Either you slow down, you you'll catch your breath or whatever. My goal for this ride was just to get some K's in the legs, spin up, spin up. I'm feeling good. My form is coming. I don't want to kill it. I don't want any setbacks. There's my brother Ilonga, Senor Ilonga on the left in the Chartreuse. And you see what he's wearing. The Rafa Chartreuse is a different shade than other Chartreuses out there. And so he's got the Let's Chartreuse stop. shoes, Chartreuse socks, and a Chartreuse jersey. And they're all the same shade because they're from the same <laughs> manufacturer. <laughs> <laughs> he would have been gone. <laughs> yeah, the driver was there before we got there, but he waited. I don't know why. It's a, it's a four-way stop sign, I think, anyway. He, he could have he just gone through the intersection by his business. But that's okay. Sometimes they do that because they don't know what we're going to be doing. I'm wearing one of the newer protein jerseys today. Protein training jersey. They did a good job with it. They lighten it up because the other ones were a little heavier and warmer. This one is more breathable. And the aesthetics are nice, you know, just like the other ones are different. So they, they, made, a, they made a change. It's significant enough to warrant trying, trying it out. We'll cut through the neighborhoods here to get out on the open road. We're going to get on Fish Creek Thoroughfare. Which will take us to Honia, Honia Texas. We're leaving Egypt. <laughs> Had it not been for cycling, I, cycling, I would have had no idea what the names of these little towns were around here. And and thankfully, because of our sport, I know all the little areas. You know, like Dobbins. <laughs> Ghosts and goblins. There's so something about Dobbins. Every time I say Dobbins, I think about ghosts and goblins. So Paul waves us up. So I just rolled through. This is Adrian. This is the guy. He got a full overhaul. So I told you, you got free speed. You got a pull. <laughs> you got a new bike. Yeah, you got to service your bike because even if you're not using them, if they sit. The grease will liquefy or harden depending on how they're stored. You got to make sure they're ready before you start putting big mounts on them. That's all bikes. It's pretty good. train by myself and I'm really going at it um, I don't really pay too much attention to speed I focus more on effort you know what zone am I staying in and so forth these guys are still doing a double line in a little bit I would slip to the right a little bit but what I was saying is that by focusing on the effort when you're in the group like right now you see up there it says 146 beat per minute that's that's zone two for me. I can stay there up to about a 
move a little to the right here. So this guy here on the left with the red jersey, his name is Adrian. Usually they ride with a group called Friends of Friends. They've been coming to our rides, visiting, which is fun. It's really cool. It, it, uh, it adds to the character of the ride. It definitely enhances the pace. I think that's Logan on the right up there in the white jersey. He hasn't been on the ride too much. And this is Javier. <laughs> He's the one who's going to pull the, the bridge back to the group by emptying the tank. <laughs> and I was crazy enough to get on his wheel. So it was interesting. But I realized I had to let him go because I've got I, I planned a long day. Everybody, not everybody that starts this ride goes long because people got other things going on or they're not feeling great. You know, once they get the taco, they reevaluate. Am I feeling great or not? Do I want to continue? Especially, do I want to continue at this pace? Coming the opposite way on this road. It's a nice climb and it levels up, but then it, it's a gradual grade, this whole area that, that we're rolling down. I think it's like minus one here or something like that. Yeah, if you look at the grade. That's my brother back there. When I spin the camera around in my mind, I count for four seconds. Then I spin it back. Just to kind of get a snapshot of what they're doing back there. Unless there's something serious going on. This bridge was added, which gave people access to use Fish Creek all the way to where the overpasses are. About, let's see, 10 years ago, the overpasses were not there. They were dead end into a set of railroad tracks. There's been a lot of changes. Once we get off the bridge, there's a, there's a light up there, but it's short. Look at that sky. B-E-A beautiful. The stylings of Jim Carrey, the actor from Bruce Almighty. It says B-E-A beautiful. I like that. I like the way he did that. So the light's green as we approach. And we go. goes up the hill as you can see visually it says one percent it's a little more than that in certain sections it bumps up to almost three percent you gotta be careful with your, audio, your effort fish creek thoroughfare the northwest Montgomery County, Texas. So 
Robert is letting John get in front of him. John pulled off the front. I don't know if he was pulling or not, or he's just drifting back. I think we'll catch one of these lights and spread out. So this is about a 1% grade and we're doing almost 38K. <laughs> I'm sitting on his left because that's where the draft is best. And then when the, when the group slows down, I just stay there and slide up. To that Dutch angle camera. That group will be coming by in, in, in a little while and then all hell will break loose instead of us staying together and keeping our unit tight we just start freezing everything the light's red it happened quickly up ahead we spread out that way people don't have to lock up their brakes everybody can gradually slow down So I'm working on this ride. I mean, that, the action has not really started yet, but I'm working. So I don't know if I mentioned that uh, Garmin Verb is having problems when we try to sync the data to the location. You need to use a map. Well, they're not displaying a map anymore. They didn't pay for access to the Google Maps that they used to use. And they just have abandoned the software. I think Garmin Verb is probably discontinued. And so they're not really trying to keep the software up. So I'm looking at other options, still testing it. But I've been able to still synchronize using a different method with the time stamp. You see the road keep going up. So when you're riding and let's say the group continues to go harder and you feel like you're pedaling like a hamster, shift up. Feel the gear more. This is where these guys come by. And all of a sudden we just threw our pace out the window. Darren is uh, pulling off the front. He's been pulling. And these guys go by, five or six or seven of them. And <laughs> these guys are like, nah, we're not letting you guys go. On the open road, we're approaching the Ridge Lake Shores entrance. Everything on the right there is a subdivision. You see the white fence. The Ridge Lake Shores. It bumps up to about 3% at the intersection. This is not happening here. Those guys are in the distance. Now, the, the people in front in our group have got the bit by the nose, as they call it, and they're chasing those guys down. <laughs> so our effort has increased. Because this is almost 2% and we're doing almost 24 miles an hour. You know, 
know how it is. You see a cyclist in the distance and you got something in the tank. They're pouring it on. We're moving. You see those guys. They're not that far ahead. The camera makes them appear further than they are. Okay. I stay a little to the left. I'm drifting to the right because he's going left. Instead of slowing down, we're using the wind to slow us down. Wind and friction. Keeping a nice tight line that paces up 26, 27 miles an hour. Look at that wind. The wind, the wind is swirling around. We're on the open road, heading towards the overpass, getting closer to Hornier, Texas. It's going to descend, then level off, and then kick up. Now, when Darren pulled off, Robert let Dar Darren get in front of him. So Darren is right there in front of him. I don't think Darren had recovered from pulling, and then these guys start to force the pace. So he just got to let them go. Okay, 31 miles an hour. They won't let those guys go. They're chasing that group. That's what this is all about. So as you get fitter, to, to keep up with this kind of effort, you need to teach your body to do intervals. Teach your body how to recover. So right around here, they start to really force the pace. Joe gets off the front. Joe was pulling. So they drift to the back and just sit in. I ride up on Robert's wheel. Uh, what's his name? Darren's going to get gapped, and he's just going to hold his effort because they start forcing the pace at the front. The groups never do what <laughs> they say they're going to do. You see the gap to Darren? And he's just holding his pace. He's not going to lift the pace. I'm not going to pass either because normally I would pass and close that gap, but I'm like, I'm not expending any unnecessary energy because I can do this pace forever. I'm pretty much in zone four here. So I figure this is, I'll just hold this pace. So Darren is holding his pace. Uh, Robert goes around. That's Pedro. I'm going to ride up to Robert's wheel. I'm trying to keep my effort steady. I think the highest effort I did was like 500 watts or something. I just ride up. So in this kind of effort, you got to find a rhythm that you can hold for the duration. If you spin too much, you can put yourself in the red. If you push too much, you can hurt, uh, blow your legs to where you need more time to recover. You got to find that perfect balance. We're, we've crested the overpass. I turn off my power. You can see it says zero watts. I'm just sitting and watching everything. 
I don't even need the pedal. You know, this thing is descending. I keep my cadence close to 90. I look back, I think it's clear. I'm gonna drift over, because I'm gonna be turning left. I'm getting into the left lane. It's closer than it appears. This camera has a wide angle. I back off just enough to kind of, there's, there's a few riders behind me. So when I when I have time off the bike, I don't come to the ride. Oh, I've been off. I just tell them this is what I'm doing today. I don't give any explanation as to why. Now the people closest to me, like Paul and them, they know. Um, I'm just not gonna ride that pace, you know. <laughs> car, car, car left. There's a car left, so I'm letting them know. Oh, yeah, he, in fact, he he waits. But what I was saying is that the the pro riders don't go around riding hard all the time unnecessarily. They get enough chances to do that during the season so unless you're paying them they're not going to really be riding hard to just chase anybody <laughs> Notice I'm sitting a little to the left so I can see, but not too far enough to where I will be in the path of any oncoming car. And in fact, as soon as they say car up, I, I move more to the right. I don't want to be, yeah, right there. I move more to the right so the guy can have enough room. Like how you see these two riders close, that's the way you use that piece of the road. Car up. This is Capitol Hill Road. In this direction is a nice descent. I like it the other way as well, because you're climbing, so you get a good sustained effort. You can see my shadow. I'm just sitting and spinning. So now those guys that we chased are up ahead, and they're gonna turn left and stop then decide to come past us again. And then all hell breaks loose. Because <laughs> cyclists cannot see other people going. They're like, okay, we're gonna show you that we can go fast. Just like the dogs do. You pass them, they wanna show you that they can go faster than you. This road hits a Raven Chapel Road up ahead. We're gonna turn right. And when you turn, it's a grade. It's about 2% or so. So you feel it. So you need to be in the proper gear or you need to stand. You'll see people do different things. Joe Nunga right here. And that's his company's name. That's the apparel company he has called Clipton. 
Look in the description. I'll have a link there. You can get quality cycling apparel at a reasonable price. I think we're going to chat a little bit. Good timing to get off the front back there. Huh? I said good timing to get off the front back there. Just pull enough to get oh, your legs going, right? There you go. <laughs> good job. How have you been, man? It's been okay. I haven't been riding as much, but getting back into it. That's nice. Yeah, everything's fine. Beautiful day. Hopefully the, the surprise was uh, nice in your wheelhouse, no? Yes. <laughs> sure. Yes. Yeah, it was nice. It was a nice surprise to I see him. When I saw him. Nice. I said, I saw you. I was like, I did a double take. <laughs> yeah. That's cool, man. Nice surprise. Car up. Car up. Close it up. Yeah, guys just need to stay on our side of the road. People drifting all over too yet. much. Yeah. I need so. a few more weeks. I like for my form to come. I don't like to force it. So when I say a few more, few more weeks, I'm being generous. I'm not that far off. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's what happened to me. I'm like, in February, I was like, okay, I'm really on the right track. Yeah, I was, I was out of town quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah, and then uh, I traveled like for two weeks and it's just like, Throws you off, man. The guys you were training with are much stronger at that point. Uh -huh. So you're just playing catch up all the way. It takes three days to start detraining. Yeah. <laughs> So this is somewhere around here that uh, they're gonna come back again because they had turned left they stopped i'm not sure why now they're coming back then they're gonna sit on your left and then mike Barreras will let them know that's not necessary but my thing is where you're gonna pass in the grass Quick, you pass and just pass you don't need to say on your left unless you see us leaning all over the place well, I got it figured out. Yeah. So I like to put it there so everybody has access right. to the course. Right. They can decide what they want to do. Well, Paul sent it to me yesterday. Yeah. This is it. On your left, on your left. Those are the same guys. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, where else are you going to pass, pass on the grass? Just pass. It's not necessary. Yeah, it's not necessary. That's where your brain gets receipt on your left. On but your Mike Barreras told him, as you were saying, on your left, that that's, that's not necessary. Just go. That's where you're supposed to be passing on my left. If you're doing something unusual, then you can warn him. Now our pace is going to oh, change they because they go up there. Behind us. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that now they're, they're up ahead, so you see our pace has picked up. So now we're going to ride up. Joe rides up. So I'll go ahead and ride up. Because they pass, but they don't really go that fast. And then the guys at the front treat them like a rabbit at a racetrack, you know. <laughs> so all of a sudden now, we've changed what we're doing. And, you know, sometimes you, you have to be disciplined to let people go. I don't go around following people I don't know. I don't. So, you know, it's a group ride. They're having that fun. I just sit in a while. I know what I'm going to do. My, my plan today was to go at least five hours i think i got almost seven in so i met my goal that's that's joe's business that uh apparel company clifton the description has the link quality cycling apparel shorts jerseys i mean you name it and so i saw them i, I have a copy coming in i'll review all kinds of designs and we're doing as i mentioned i don't know if i mentioned they're doing he's doing our kit we got to come up with a design theme i want to do like a white jersey with the, the graphics and stuff placed strategically because we've never done something white it'd be nice and summer jersey breathable this hill is not easy we're going up and so it's like uh 
Oh, actually, we've already climbed the we've leveled up. That's, I looked at the watts and it was low. I'm not even pedaling right there. This is where we got the mix up. So Paul and them went straight we were and Arizona we turned. A million times. And I I basically had done the summary and said we're gonna turn here, not knowing that the map had, had followed another route. route. Oh so, but we've only done this a million times. So this is where Mike goes really hard to keep up with those guys. Those guys knew there was a mix up and they didn't back off. And my thing is, if you're gonna make a break, you need to earn the break. You don't get a break from a mishap. This rock like a so. million times. I, I said the standard rock. I don't know where they're going. That could have been a, a wreck there. So anyway, uh, that's Javier there. That's James and Robert. So I'm going to go and get on his wheel. I said, okay, there's four of us. We will we'll ride back because I'm not gonna. I wasn't planning on chasing anybody. But uh, Javier decides he wants to go full gas. And I just follow the fastest wheel. So I'm sitting here and he starts to pull away. So I'll go ahead and go around these guys. Because look at the gap. He said he hates the corner. There's nothing wrong with the corner. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's, so I ride up. And I didn't realize we're going this fast. But I ride up and I get on this wheel. And then he starts to go even harder. He's in a big gear. He's rocking it. I sit behind him. I look around. I'm in the draft. We've got a couple of riders. Those two riders are behind us, but then we're going to end up gapping them because he just continues to go harder and harder. Like he worked so hard that by the time we caught the groove, he couldn't even get in. He couldn't get make contact with the group because you know he just had gone so hard. We're doing almost 31, 32 miles an hour here. So it's a good pull, but I wouldn't work that hard just to get to that group. If I'm working that hard, I want to be off the front. But it's, you know, it's a good effort. I sit to his left because that's where the draft is best. And then I realize we're going to be turning soon. We can see the group in the distance. So I back off for that turn. I don't want to be right on him. I don't need to take any chances. So when we turn here, I decide I'm going to let this guy go. I'm not going to waste. I don't need to go that hard. So I hope you got a chance to get out and get your K's in. But this is part of what we did on Saturday. Remember, you get your K's in and keep all the doctors fired. More to come.